Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the perfect saddle and how you could either make one or find one. We made our first saddle seven seasons ago. Whether you're planning on making your saddle or not, the information that you're going to get in this video may help you find that perfect saddle. If you're new to saddle hunting or maybe you're using a saddle that's uncomfortable and you're looking for some tips, some tricks, some things you can do, follow along in this video. We're going to discuss some of the fails on what I've done making my own saddle and things that I would look for that would be key components for not only safety, but comfort and a long day of sitting in the tree. So let's get to the video. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but there's a deer blowing in the background. Again, if you're a DIY person like me, you've probably thought about and or looked into making your own saddle. This is not going to be a how-to video. What we're going to be talking about in this video is fails. We're going to start out with the very first saddle that I made, which is this one right here. And you can see it's kind of a triangle shaped. The one thing that I do want to point out on this is where your bridge attaches to the saddle. This webbing here is a two inch webbing and it's a continuous loop that goes through both bridges and then it's sewn down at the bottom. My idea on this was to reinforce this where it overlaps with leather down here. And I'll tell you right now, after about 30 minutes of having worn this thing, I realized it was a complete fail. That's just way too much thickness down there in your crotch area. It felt like you, ha you were wearing a diaper that was full if you know what I'm saying. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this one to the side because it was a fail and it just simply didn't fit right. The next one, and this is the model that I've been using that I made. Okay, so some of the key features that were extremely important to me when I was building my own saddle was this. Number one, I wanted to be able to put it on like a belt. So if you'll notice, we've got a two inch webbing material. That is for the belt. And then when you start talking about your bridge, I also had the bridge attached with carabiners. I had one on both sides. We'll talk about how that didn't work effectively later on in the video, but that's how it would connect is the bridge would connect with carabiners. It was very important to me that you'd be able to just, instead of trying to step through in the dark wearing clumsy clothes or, or especially when you start talking about in the winter time and you're wearing coveralls or whatever else you may be wearing, I wanted it to be able to come on and off real easy. So that to me was key. I didn't want a bridge that I had to step through and I didn't want a belt that I had to step through. So the belt buckle on this is again, it's just a cheap plastic belt buckle that you would see on any other type of just lightweight belt. You might ask yourself, well, Dale, that's not climbing rated. You're exactly right. And I'm going to explain to you this. In my opinion, and of course, this is just my opinion, your saddle, the only thing the belt's doing is just holding your saddle in place. This is not, your belt is not going to be part of a fall protection. And when you start talking about, let's just use mountain climber or arborist, take your pick. If they are to fall, they may be falling 30 feet and they would need those belt buckles and the leg straps to be extra heavy duty. If you're in the saddle and you fall more than 12 inches, you've messed up something or something's gone wrong. And let's just hypothetically say your tether breaks and you take a dump from the very top of the tree all the way down to the bottom. It doesn't matter what kind of buckle you have on because once your main lines broke, if that was the case, it doesn't matter what kind of buckle you have. So in my opinion, the buckles all they are there for is to hold your saddle in place while you're walking to the woods and back to camp at the end of the hunt. Again, that's just my opinion. I'm not a saddle manufacturer. I'm not a saddle maker. I'm just a dude who made his own. So real quickly, we're going to go over the shape of this and the design. And I will tell you real quickly, the one thing that I did want, just like we talked about in the fail, We've got a continuous loop of webbing. This is two inch webbing and it's basically the same type of stuff you'd see in your car's seat belt. It goes all the way around. It's gonna be the same piece continuous all the way down here to the bottom. Down here at the bottom, I've got it overlapping six inches. The main panel, if you look at it, is kind of cut 
like a piece of a football. Obviously, it's gonna be a big football. That's where you're gonna get that curve that cradles you, and it'll fit your body better. Unlike the triangle piece that I originally made, it was just a flat fail. So if you guys are considering making your own, the total overall width on this is right at 16 inches, and that's gonna be at the widest point. And then down here on the ends, it tapers down to nine and a half inches on both ends. So again, for the key safety features, if when you're in the saddle and it's holding you, this is one continuous loop and this is what all your weight's gonna be riding on. The rest of this material is essentially just for comfort. The next feature that we'll talk about real quick, and this is the lineman's belt that is attached to the saddle that you'd put your lineman rope on. I made these loops where you can get two fingers in. When you're attaching your lineman rope, this left side, I always left it on there. It was always connected and then I had a carabiner on the other side and it would connect into this one. During this early fall when you're not wearing as much clothing, this was not super hard to find, but as you get deeper into the winter, that's where I'm gonna call this a fail. That loop is just too small and it's too difficult to find in the dark and you end up spending a great deal of time trying to make sure that you've got this thing connected in the right spot so that you can get up and down your tree safely. So again, that would be another thing that I would look for if I was looking for the perfect saddle. I want one where the lineman connections for your lineman rope is gonna be much bigger than this. Something that you could easily grab even with gloves on and, and get it connected and know that you're in it securely. The next thing, and we kind of touched on it a little bit. Again, I wanted this to be, instead of a step through model, I had carabiners attached to these loops where your bridge would go. So my bridge had a carabiner on both sides. If I was gonna redo it, what I would do is I would put basically a girth hitch or something on one side of your bridge and connect it to the saddle that way. And the reason that that would be important is because once you're up in the tree, what you can kind of see where this has got a natural bend to it. That's where I've been hanging this whole time. So if you had a way to where you could kind of adjust that down and it would hang right here, it would level out how much weight is being transferred, whether it be on your back or on the bottom of your legs. And we'll get into some more of that hip pinch topic as we go further into the video. But what I would do is, if I was gonna do this again, attach that with a girth hitch or, or Prusik knot, whatever you wanna call it, make the bridge long enough. And then over here on this other side, I would put a continuous loop. Same thing to where you'd still have the grip, but you could still use a carabiner. And then lastly, when we're talking about the construction of this saddle, as you can see, down here where this material overlaps, and I've kind of showed you the overlap already, this is where I've sewn in the leg straps. Again, the leg straps, that's just regular one inch webbing material. It'll hold, I don't know how much weight, but quite a bit. But I just use the plastic buckles. These don't make a lot of noise. In my mind, the only thing that these are doing is just holding your saddle in place. If you're in a fail situation, these plastic buckles are not gonna hold you. They're not rated for weight. They're just there to hold the saddle in position. In my mind, that was a decision that I made. So if you're gonna make one, use your best judgment and do some research on that. But I can promise you this, none of the people that make these for a living are using uh, little, these little clips. I mean, that's almost like the paracord bracelet type clip. That, in my mind again, these buckles are just to hold the saddle in place. And then once you're up in the tree, you're webbing, which is that two inch webbing that goes all the way around, is what's holding your weight. So that's the last little piece on the manufacturing part of the process that I did I, when I was sewing this lineman belt into this saddle. I did make it to where it works like moly. And as you can see, I've got two different little dump pouches, one on each side. And the key thing about this is 
I always keep the same stuff in both of these pouches. One of them's going to be the tether, and then the other one's going to be my lineman rope. And then additionally, I'll have a way to hang my backpack, which is a paracord type attachment that goes on the tree, and then and or a bow hanger. The next thing that I'm going to point out, and nobody really talks about this, especially with your manufacturers that are making these for a living. You got all this webbing around here, and people are tying a bunch of gear on here. And if you've ever seen a rookie officer out in the field, he's got stuff from one into his belt to the other you can't you can almost not even see his belt because he's got so much junk on his belt you go look at an old fat policeman and he's got his gun a mag pouch and maybe a pair of handcuffs and he doesn't have a bunch of junk on the belt where that comes into play especially when you're talking about the saddle you're thinking man i could put all these different things on here well when you throw your backpack on that has your climbing sticks and whatever device you're going to use once you get up there a little miniature stand or whatever you're using that backpack's constantly pushing on this belt because it's going to come down and whatever you've got attached to this when you first start out your hike it it's a little annoying but when you're on your way back in and you're exhausted and you're fighting to keep your saddle up because it keeps waddling down on you because the backpack's pushing on it It'll make a good preacher want to cuss. Guys, I'm just telling you, those web, the moly webbing looks great, but the more you go out, and I don't care what saddle you got, see if you don't experience this same thing where your backpack's not pushing on this and then you're constantly trying to keep your saddle up. And that's another reason that I wanted these quick clips for your legs, because those quick clips, it feels like it's pulling your saddle down when you're walking out to your tree or walking back to camp. It's just another thing. It feels like it's wiggling your saddle down. That's another reason that I wanted these buckles to where you could adjust it. So it's adjustable. When you put it on, you're gonna have it fairly tight so that you can wear it out. It's secure against your body. You're going through green briars, trees, twigs, whatever, all the stuff, that, all the elements that you're gonna go through to get to where your tree is that you pick out to hunt out of. And then once you get up in the tree, it's real easy to adjust it out and give yourself some breathing room. Once you're secure in the tree and you've got everything set up, I'll loosen these up as well as the, the leg straps. That's when I put them on is when I'm at the base of the tree. I got to where I, I just didn't like the way that it would be pulling on your crotch the whole way there and the whole way back. So those are some of the key benefits of, of a belt that's adjustable. You want to tighten it up when you're walking out in the field and then, like I say, when you get up in your tree, you can let it out and give yourself some breathing. Now then, I told you at the beginning of this video, I've learned a lot out of hunting with this thing and I've also learned some, some things that I kind of cheated to help with hip pinch. One of the things that I did do is I made these hip pads. This is a yoga mat and it's the same soft material that I used. And if you'll notice on this, you've got a green canvas on the inside and then this outside is soft. And it is silent hide is what it's called. And you can buy this material in bulk, but I used a yoga mat for the hip pad. And I just doubled it up where the hips are. And then I also made a set of knee pads that matches I did the same thing. Unfortunately, I lost one of the knee pads. Now, here's the downside to the hip pads is I really don't have a way to for these to attach inside. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but there's a deer blowing in the background. I had no idea, but you could hear a deer blowing in the background. So I guess the deer out moving around this morning. The moon guide shows it'll be a better evening hunt than morning. I got Sunday school this morning anyway, so I'm not hunting today. I used a yoga mat, cut this down, and then again, that silent hide material, you can find it on bulk online. So what would I do different if I was making this all over again? I'm going to tell you the things that I'd make different. Number one, if I could find some four inch webbing, I would use the four inch webbing. The four inch webbing would help distribute the weight from your back down to the bottom of your leg. The next thing that I would do is on my bridge, I'd make sure that it was, it was either girth hitched or Prusik knot or whatever on both sides. That way you can adjust the tilt of how the rope's pulling on your saddle to help eliminate some of the hip pinch. September 28th was opening day of archery here in Texas. So I had a seven hour hunt in it and I'm telling you, by the time I got out of the saddle, I felt like I was crippled up. 
I forgot to take my hip pads, but that is something that can help you with comfort. If you're, if you have a saddle right now and you're experiencing hip pain, that would be something that I'd look into. If you had a four inch webbing, that would give you twice as much width going around, not only the top, but the bottom of the saddle to help distribute the weight. And then along with the girth hitches on where your bridge attaches, you could adjust that so that you could really fine tune your comfort level. I think if you were able to fine tune that, it would cut down on hip pin. And then lastly for comfort, everybody was talking about these back straps to where you could kind of have kind of lean back and all that. I made one of them as well using the padding, same material with the loops. And then I had prussic knots to where you could adjust the tension and it was attached to the, to the main tether as well. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, that turned into a big, huge pain in the rear, and I do not carry it anymore. I don't even know where it is. And I, what my findings on it was, is it was just something else to interfere with you drawing your bow properly. If you're hunting with a crossbow, they may actually be perfect, because now you've got a place to rest your elbows and kind of give you that third arm or, or sticks type feeling if you was hunting with a rifle or a crossbow. Otherwise, that the back strap, or the back brace or whatever they're calling it, back support systems. If you're hunting with a bow, that's just more junk that's gonna get in your way. The secondary thing is make your loops for your lineman belt much bigger than this to where you can find it in the dark. And even better yet, one that's big enough that you could find it if you was wearing gloves if it's really cold and dark. This concept has worked for me I'm just telling you things that I would look for if I was looking for a new saddle or I was gonna rebuild this. Now in my mind where it comes in handy making your own saddle, you can definitely know what you would change different, what you would do different, and then again, additionally, things that I would look for if I was gonna go purchase a pre-made one. You're gonna hear people say you need to inspect your gear and I think it's something that everybody needs to do every year. If you can see here, and I'll hold this up, this is Predator Rope and you see this white sticking out that's part of the core i can't find anything online that tells you how long or good rope would last how many years any of that again we started hunting seven years ago and i noticed this towards the end of season last year i could see a tiny piece of white and after my first seven hour hunt that we talked about earlier in this video this year in september I had that much white showing when I got done. So I have replaced this. And then another thing that I wanna show you on the little bags that I made, you can see that this, these little buttons, they're starting to show some wear as well. So I have made new bags for this year. Not that a bag's life-threatening if it falls off, it'd just be inconvenient, but I went ahead and replaced that. But you can just kind of make these little bags, the little dump pouches yourself and save yourself 60, 80 bucks there because the average one of them are 30 to $40. So that's definitely something you could make. Your life's not on the line if, if your sewing machine does fail. And then also this material like this, you can use your grandma's quilting machine to sew it up because it ain't that big a deal. If your rope was to fall out, it may be inconvenient. If you like this video at all, or you found any of this information useful, please consider hitting that like button down below. We truly appreciate each and every one of you, and until next week's video comes out, be sure to check out one of our playlists up here. I'll link it up here so it'll be easy to find. And then also, guys, comment down below. Let us know what your favorite features are of your tree saddle. Maybe some modifications that you've done to make it yours or, or whatever your favorite part is. I also want to say this. We have found what I believe to be the best saddle on the market. We'll be bringing that video to you as soon as well. Until next week's video comes out, I hope you all have a blessed week and let's get outside and make something happen.